Hello there, my name is Junibug. If we haven't met before, my name is Junibug. It's very nice to meet you. If we have met before, you've probably seen me around Twitch, or maybe if you're crazy enough, you've seen me around on Instagram or TikTok or like, I don't know, maybe eating the garbage out of your trash can. Something like that. Anyways, you may be wondering, like, Junie, don't you stream on Twitch? You don't really make Let's Play videos. I don't know, man. It's like 9.36 p.m. and I kind of got bored and I figured I haven't really made a long-form YouTube video in a long time. I don't really know what to talk about, so... I just thought, you know, fuck it. Let's play my favorite game of all time, Donkey Kong Country 2. So if I were to actually sit down and play every level in one sitting, I can get it done, but I also am not... Listen, I'm not the biggest fan of watching, like, three-hour videos, like, unless they're VODs, but... You know, you won't really catch me watching video essays. So without further ado, you know, maybe we'll split this up into world by world, depending on how long this takes and how how much I yap. I'm kind of a yapper. Only sometimes. I'm either a yapper or I turn into a rock. So hello, welcome. This is uh, Donkey Kong Country 2. If you hear me like shift and make weird noises, this is just who I am as a person. But Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Conquest, which for a long time, I didn't even recognize the pun of it, of conquest, conquest, but tee hee hee, very funny. This is a, this is actually one of the few games that I have 102% a couple of times. Clearly not here, but in my free time, as a child, I'm not a child, this shit takes way too long. I did play this online with my, with one of my uh, best friends, Twilight King 432 and that was a really fun time. I really like playing this game in like any capacity as you can see. I just, you know, try to do casual playthroughs. I'm not a speedrunner by any means. This is the game that I would like to learn how to speedrun someday. I did do a race of this a long time ago and I nearly like fumbled it, but I did win. And that was pretty cool and exciting. So... It's like driving me nuts. I see like things going up on my OBS. It's, my OBS has also been weird. Without further ado, hello, I am playing Donkey Kong Country 2 at 9.30pm at night. My key light is blinding me, but that's because I don't know how to adjust it otherwise. So this is like one of the few levels that I practiced um, <laughs> speedrunning back in the day, obviously. I don't really know how to do it much anymore, but this is like the tutorial level. It's really interesting because I was watching... Um, one of my friends, Nintendo Capri Sun, he was uh, streaming this game the other day. It's funny because I was trying to catch his Metroid Fusion stream, but he's so good at it and he's so fast that, <laughs> that I kind of missed it by the end. So, ori! So I missed it completely at the end. But he was uh, playing a bunch of other SNES games and I was so happy just to see this one. And, you know, because I love this. And it was really interesting to me because you learn that just. You know, everyone has different experiences with games and how they consume- HELLO! With how they consume games. And for me, I don't really consider myself to be very good at video games, really, by any means. I feel like it, the older I get, I don't really have much dexterity, to be quite honest with you. However, I still, you know, I still enjoy him, clearly. This is one that is near and dear to my heart. But, you know, back, back off the yappin'. I'm also like very interested because this is a game, I think it's hard, but because I've played this so many times, it's not the most, uh, you know, it's not the most difficult game, but then I see people and they think this is a very difficult game. And it's really interesting to me because I'm not looking at them like, oh my gosh, how could you be bad at this game? It's so easy because I know for me, I hate when people do that. I think that's really annoying because that's just invalidating someone else's experience and how they play games or what games they choose to play. Because for me, I know the game that I am envious about people being good at is Super Metroid and just Metroid games in general. Because I think the movement in Super Metroid and also knowing how to path and how to fight um, it's not something I'm very good at. I think Super Metroid and as well as Yoshi's Island. I'm very envious that people are good at Yoshi's Island. I'm very envious of people who are good at those games and I feel like I don't really have the time to to learn properly. I just play very casually and 
still fun and good enough for me, you know? My mom is very good at us. Not Super Metroid at Yoshi's Island back in the day, though. But this is this was our peanut butter and jam, you know? A lot of my motivation to get better at video games is, uh... <laughs> you know, if you are the youngest sibling, perhaps you relate, but... <laughs> <laughs> but I I have two older siblings. I have a brother and a sister and My brother was always like, you know, we're, we're all gamers in our family But my brother was like always really good at games I think he 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 was like pro level at one of them at some point in his life I don't I don't really know. I don't really know what he was doing when <laughs> <laughs> when he was really, really into online PC gaming, I'm like, okay, see, see, see you around, see you later. Ho hope you do well. But my brother, man, <laughs> he liked to make me cry and he liked to ridicule me and to make me feel like poo poo. So a lot of my motivation to get better was to kind of just have my middle finger to him, I guess, in a way, to be like, yeah, you know, I can be good at games. Whatever, you know, just because I'm little, just, you know, whatever. I guess even back then, as a kid, like, within my family, I never really felt like I was bad at games because, as a girl, it wasn't really until I started meeting other kids that, that kind of became a big deal. And by meeting other kids, uh, I was homeschooled. And when I was not homeschooled anymore, um, which was in the sixth grade, it's like, man, they're like, um, you're a girl? Who plays games? You must be doing it for male attention. I'm like, bro, I am 10 years old. <laughs> I'm 10, 11 years old. I don't care, man. Like, I'm a kid. I don't care about getting a boyfriend as much as I, like, you know, it's like my little dream. Uh, I wasn't using gaming as a way to do that because clearly it never happened. And in fact, <laughs> it didn't happen for 22 years. Because, man, dating is hard. Very, very strange. I don't get how people... <laughs> I don't get how people... Uh, oh. <gasps> I don't know why. I thought that was gonna fly away. So <gasps> I'm sorry. I I kind of forgot that was there. I've replayed this game a couple of times on stream. So... <laughs> so that was kind of strange. But here we go, we have Creepy Crow. What I learned from watching GDQ speedruns is that apparently that there's RNG in this BS. And also you want to end with Dixie because Dixie um, has a shorter jingle. But I personally think Diddy Kong's is way cooler. Because, you know, he brings out the boombox. It's very 90s. 90s kids-esque, you know, like when you're watching the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stuff. Look at that RNG, that's pretty swag. Okay, don't drop an egg on my head, otherwise I'm gonna cry! But like, yeah, my favorite movies back in the day were like... Ninja Turtles on the VHS. We, <laughs> we had a bunch of that shit. That's pretty good RNG, I have to say. First, first egg on the first time, and a second egg on the second drop. That's pretty good. But yeah, I actually learned my first Quote curse word, which was damn. <laughs> I learned that from Raphael of the Ninja Turtles, and I remember I remember like saying it in front of my mom and she was horrified and my sister was just cracking up back when we, we shared a room back in the day. <laughs> but yeah. That's why I, I honestly when I was younger, I always thought I always liked Dixie. I still like Dixie. But now that I'm older, I prefer Diddy Kong. I just think he's so cute. But when I was younger, I really wanted to be like Dixie and even Tiny Kong, where I would tie up my hair in like ponytails and pigtails. And I thought that maybe I could become Helicopter. I also thought I could be like Mary Poppins, that if I had, you know, an umbrella, I could float if I jumped around. And, <laughs> you know, that is not the case. Okay, I'm terrified of spiders, but Squitter is awesome. He wears shoes and he wears sneakers. Sneakers are really freaking awesome, man. <laughs> also, shout out to David Wise. One of my favorite conventions ever is MAGFest. It is in National Harbor, it's in January, and it's so much fun. And I've made. <gasps> I'm like, I have no idea where I am. <laughs> 
<laughs> was landing? The camera was so weird. Anyways, the first MacFest I went to, I believe, is in 2017. And me and my me and my best friend, Ace Fangirl, aka Diana, um, we also that's where I met Twilight King 432, as I mentioned earlier. And we went to an event called MagProm, and basically you just got dressed up and went to like dance, except I'm like, I don't know how to dance at these occasions, so I just was there to jam with the music. And one of the surprise guests that they had was David Wise, and he just started playing aquatic ambience on the saxophone with like accompanying music and visuals, and it was such a magical experience. I, le I legitimately was tearing up, and I just felt so emotional because I felt so nostalgic. Donkey Kong Country 1 is... Definitely not my favorite Donkey Kong Country ever. Excuse me, it is a little bit jank, to be quite honest, and... I feel like DKC2 just has so many quality of life things. <gasps> I thought I landed right on top of them. Okay, fine. That is very unfortunate. I wonder if I can land that way. I mean, to be quite honest, I think I'll be okay without Diddy. We'll see. In before, uh, <laughs> in before and Diddy dies, but I feel like DKC uh, two takes what was good about uh, the first game. It just makes this so much better. Like I feel like all the level designs are just really fun and creative, and I feel like I never get tired of you know discovering all the secrets again. The graphics are absolutely beautiful, considering that this is a SNES game. I heard that they hand-painted the sprites. Don't quote me on that, because I'm not quite sure. And then they digitized them to be to be sprites, and I just think that is so amazing. I, I love that so much in this music. Again, David Wise is amazing. Ooh, I was gonna say, that's kind of awkward. I don't like throwing his Dixie. But everything, like, it just feels so lively, and it's a very interesting take because you go from being on DK Island onto, you know, the Krem Isles. Is that what it's called? I don't know. K Rule, K Rap, whatever his name is. King K Rule. But I hated K Rule. <laughs> I hated K Rule in whatchamacallit, um, in Smash Brothers when he was introduced. I'm like, man, he, he feels so cheap. And he's also heavy and can do, like, he's a heavy fighter and can do so much damage. Like, I don't know, man. I guess that's what they do. But as a Zero Suit Samus player, I felt like I was <laughs> landing so many hits on him and I'm like, I can't kill this guy. He can, he can just launch me with two hits. Girl, what's up with that? I don't get that. I can't, you know, I don't get that either, that it landed like that. I don't like those chomper guys and I hate the little chomper red fish. Some days, though, I think about getting into Smash once again. I used to be really into Smash growing up. One of my childhood dreams, as cringy as it sounds, was to, uh, what, oh my god. <laughs> I got so greedy with my swimming. One of my childhood dreams was to become a Smash Brothers professional player. I don't know why, as a kid, I felt like, yeah, I can do it. Oh my gosh. It, <gasps> what the fuck is going on? <laughs> that was such a mess! Oh my gosh, I thought I was ponytailing and then maybe the DK barrel canceled it. I don't know. But yeah, my dream was to be a professional Smash Brothers player because I thought, how cool would it be if I could be like an awesome Smash Brothers player? Like, you know, be like be a female Smash Brothers player. I guess at that time I didn't really see too many and to this day I don't really follow like professional Smash too much. I've always been more into Mar watching Marvel vs. Capcom 3 professionally. That was my favorite fighting game to watch. It was so fun. Whoop. But then, I don't know, I, I got into a Smash League because I, I really just wanted to challenge myself. I needed to like find other people I could play with because a lot of my friends that I played with IRL, you know, they played it very casually and that's fine, but like, I needed people that were sweaty, you know? Like, you, you need to find sweat lords. And I say that, like, not to be, like, mean about it, but that's just how it is. You need people that are in the grind, and these people are as sweaty as me. 
But I, I just realized, like, it wasn't really worth the trouble. It's very stressful to try to be good at something, like, on a competitive level, in my opinion. Like, I feel like it's very rewarding, because I do have, like, a competitive itch sometimes. That's why I play, like, League of Legends. Like, it kind of kind of itches that scratch for me, you know? There's a time to relax, and there's a time to, like, you know, be competitive, and League is kind of both. Anywho's. This level is kind of whack, I'm not gonna lie. But also, like, I just had a lot of bad experiences in the Smash community. Just, you know... I went to one live tournament in my college because <laughs> I really wanted to make, like, Smash friends and I really wanted to challenge myself because I did win, like, a college dorm tournament. Like, and when I say a dorm tournament, it was really a social in my college dorms for Smash 4. And I was really, really trying my best to win. And I did. There were two tournaments and I... I don't remember where I placed them in the first one, but in the second one I ended up coming in first and it was... It was kind of nuts. Like, I don't know. I... Like, this, it sounds so high school and it sounds fake as hell. Girl, I know. But people like, knew about me. Like, they actually... <laughs> they actually heard about me around college campus. And I had, like, probably three or four people walk up to me, like, in the dorms or in the cafeteria saying, like, oh my gosh, I heard you're that girl that won a Smash tournament. And I I was so shocked. And a few of them that won were girls. Or not won. A few of them that approached me were girls. And they, they just, you know, they said like, oh, that's really cool to see that like a girl, you know, won, you know? And even girls that I met at the tournament, they, they were so nice and they were so lovely. And I hate this beetle boy because, because you know, if you know, you know. <laughs> and, um, like, you know, what, what am I doing, girl? What are you doing? Um... When I met them, a lot of them were, you know, we kind of just banded together and a lot of them just said, like, yeah, you know, we really love online gaming, but we just feel really, like, anxious due to, like, bad experiences we've had and we just don't feel comfortable. And, you know, when they saw that I was, like, winning, they, they were just, like, cheering me on and, like, it, you know, just, it kind of, it kind of felt meaningful, you know, it's like, I'm not perfect representation of all women in the Smash community, of course, but it's like, you know, I know how it feels to be underestimated to, you know... I don't know, man. I I'm just yapping. But I just know how it feels to feel, like, afraid. And I want to show, like, people, like, hey, if you really put your mind to something, you can do it too, you know? But anyways, when I went to <laughs> when I went to this other tournament, this is like a few years later, and I was like really nervous. I was like terrified because I have social anxiety. And <laughs> when I saw when I saw the people, I was the only girl there. And like that's that's like fine, but I was just like, oh my gosh, like I'm just like intimidated as hell, you know? And <laughs> And within, like, the first few minutes of me entering the premise, I just, I, like, had three guys surround me and they're like, Hey, how's it going? Like, and it was kind of in a flirtatious manner and I just felt, like, a little bit scared because they kind of just, like, tailed me around the whole event the whole time. And... Like, they were, they were, like, friending me on social media without me giving them, like, any of my information. <laughs> They're like, is this you? I'm like, uh, yes, that is me. And, yeah, I, I felt like some of my experiences in the Smash community were, like, I don't know. It was just a weird time. But, you know, I don't, I don't mean to be, like, a hater on the Smash community, but... That was the reason why I did not want to be professional, and I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna enjoy this casually and stuff. And then also, because I won the Smash tournament, people went around like, oh, Junie is the best at Smash, and it was also terrifying because <laughs> the, the first semester, the Smash tournament stuff happened my second semester. But the first semester, I lived in, like, 
I lived in really crappy dorms. Like, there are rats, cockroaches, and flooding from the plumbing from the bathrooms. It was disgusting. And because it was also very small, like, we didn't have much to do, we would just, like, hang out with each other. And that was really fun. It was a very fun social aspect. And some of the guys on our floor, they had, like, consoles, and they were like, Oh, hey, we heard you like video games. Like, do you want to play? And I just saw they were playing a, a shooter game. I'm not really into shooters, and I was just like, Haha, tell me when you play Street Fighter. And they said, Okay, we'll let you know. And I thought, Oh, crap. You mean they actually have Street Fighter? And... You know, then they text me out of the blue one day, they're like, Hey, we're setting up Street Fighter, Street Fighter 4. You wanna play? And I said, yeah. And I was just like... <laughs> my, my, it felt like my knees were kind of shaking a little bit. And I figured, I'm like, God, I am so terrible at online Street Fighter 4. You know, I'm like, there's just simply no way that this is going to happen. And I guess, you know, getting beat up online in Street Fighter 4? Eat off? Because I ended up, uh, I ended up winning a lot, and it was really funny because <laughs> there were a couple of girls that were like, "All right, we're gonna cheer for you, Junie," and I felt like, "Yeah, awesome." And then <laughs> when I started winning, I started streaking. They, they like gave me a look and were like, "You're, you're not the underdog. Let, like, you, we, we thought you were the underdog, and you just were not." And I was like, "Man, that makes me sad." <laughs> <laughs> but then, later on, I guess, you know, I lived in a small dorm. It went around pretty quickly. Oh, sh And I come home, I was like, hanging out with this guy that I had a crush on at the time. I come back and I just see a guy <laughs> waiting by, like, the door to the stairwell. And <laughs> he's like, hey, are you Judy? And I'm like, uh... Yes, and you know, he's just holding his fight stick and he's like, I heard that you're really good at Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and I'm like, oh, girl, please. <laughs> and I thought, this man has a fight stick. What chance do I have? I have no hope of doing this, you know? Like, there's just no way. <laughs> <laughs> and then I ended up beating him. I'm like, wow, I'm just a controller scrub. Because I thought people with fight sticks. I'm like, oh, if you have a fight stick, that means that you're just... <gasps> that just means that you're better at the game. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing with that cannonball. Jesus. Because, like, I don't know. I just, in my mind, I'm like, oh, if you have a fight stick, like, you've unlocked all the secrets to being a good fighting game player. Like, you just know more. And I was like, wow, someone on controller won. This is actually incredible. And we became friends after, and he invited me to hang out. He's like, hey, why don't I play Marvel in my room? And we did. And I also... <laughs> I, I I won so many times that I think I, uh, I nearly ruined our friendship. So that was a little bit disappointing, but <laughs> we, we were still friends for a long time. And I, I still think about him. I hope that he's doing well in the world. He's he's very, very cool. I really enjoyed hanging out with him the time that we did, and I enjoyed hanging out with his friends as well. So if you're out there and you somehow watch this and you're like, what the hell? This girl became a VTuber. Hi! It's nice to see you. But yeah, I think you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop there. And maybe we'll pick up Barrel Bayou next time so thank you so much for hanging out and chilling out with me for however long this was thank you for listening to my story if you want to see more please leave a comment and tell me that you like this like chatting lp series is this an lp by a less player <gasps> sheesh and also don't forget to leave a like because it really does help believe it or not and like subscribe for more and if you want to catch me live, like, where I'm most active is my Twitch, so twitch.tv slash juniebug. I'd love to see you there. I'm playing Link through the Kingdom Hearts series at the moment, but I also play, like, a bunch of Nintendo games and just, like, whatever I want. I, I'm also very thirsty for the husbandos and waifus, and I also do a podcast once a month, so I'd love to see you over there. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a good night. Love you, care you. Good night! <laughs>